Hello and welcome back to the Art of Electronics. In today's video, I'm going through exercise 1.39. For this exercise, we need to design a rumble filter. First of all, let me show you what the question is asking, and then I'll go on to explain what they mean by a rumble filter, or what I think the book means by a rumble filter. And finally, obviously, we'll get to the solution, and then we will do a simulation to show that what we have calculated works properly, or as expected. So the question itself says, design a rumble filter for audio applications and the filter should pass frequencies greater than 20 Hertz. The requirement is to set the cutoff frequency, which is the 3 dB point at 10 Hertz. And we are to assume we have a perfect source so that its impedance is basically zero and the load impedance is a minimum of 10 kilo ohms. What is a rumble filter? I think what this is talking about is basic low frequency rumbling sounds that you can get. Something like a thunderstorm, if that makes sense. So the filter itself is going to be a high pass filter. We have been given a 3 dB point and we have been given our load impedance value as well. So we have covered high pass filters quite a lot on this channel before and with some of the exercises that we've been through. But we've never really designed one. So this is going to be a good exercise to allow us to do that. So just a quick overview on what a single order high pass filter looks like with a capacitor. So you have a series capacitor with our source voltage here. You have a parallel resistor with the load. And basically on the output, you have a load resistor or a load impedance. It doesn't need to be a resistor over here. This is just representing the load. And this is what the frequency response looks like. So on the x-axis you have the frequency and on the y-axis obviously you have the gain and the 3 dB point is the FC, basically the cutoff frequency. And in case for this filter that's going to be set as 10 Hz. So let's firstly talk about the known parameters. I know we've already been through them but it's a good idea to just jot them down. So cutoff frequency is 10 Hz, the source impedance is 0 ohms and the load impedance is 10 kilo ohms minimum. And this is what our filter is going to look like. Obviously in simulation, we won't be able to have a zero ohm resistor. So I'll just change that to something that's really small value. We have a series capacitor, a parallel resistor, which form the filter. And then this is basically our load. So the filter itself is just this C1 and R1. And we need to calculate the values of these two components over here. So referencing back to Art of Electronics, on chapter 1.7.1, I think it's page number 44 near the bottom left, the book recommends that you have a filter resistor value that is a tenth of the load resistor value so that it doesn't affect the filter performance significantly. So as we have a load resistor of 10 kilo ohms, our R is going to be fixed at 1 kilo ohm which is a tenth of 10 kilo ohms. Now to calculate the capacitor value, we can use this cutoff frequency equation, which is one over two pi RC. Obviously the only unknown in this is the C, so we need to get the C by itself. We previously fixed the resistance to one kilo ohms and the cutoff frequency is given to us in the question as 10 Hertz. So the equation for the capacitance becomes one over two pi times 1000 ohms times 10 hertz which gives us a capacitance value of 15.915 microfarads so to summarize we have fixed our resistor value to 1 kilo ohm and we have fixed the capacitor value to 15.915 microfarads a value like this wouldn't be available in real life so maybe you'd have to compromise and get 20 microfarads which would which would reduce the cutoff frequency to compensate the reduction in cutoff frequency you can obviously change the resistance value. However, you need to make sure that you don't increase this resistance value too much. You don't affect the filter performance due to the load condition. However, with a bigger capacitance, your load resistor is going to go down anyway. So that might be actually a better thing to do. So the book recommends a ratio of 10 between these two components. But what I would say is that if you are designing a filter like this in real life, maybe the ratio between the two components should be larger than 10, such that the filter performance is not affected too much. Obviously you've got compromises in that you're loading the source as you increase the resistance value over here. 
So if you've got any impedance on this, you've got to keep that in mind as well when you're selecting the resistance value. So it's going to be a balance between this point, this point and this point. Let's now have a quick look at how this filter behaves in simulation. So this is the setup in LC Spice and I'm doing an AC analysis and I've set it as linear with 10,000 points starting from 1 microhertz all the way up to 100 hertz. And I've set the voltage source as AC space 1 and this is basically to make it work with this function over here. You can see I've set a very small value resistance for the source impedance and I've put down the minimum value for the load impedance over here. This is the filter that we have designed. Basically we have 15.915 microfarad capacitor and a parallel R1 which is 1000 ohms. So let's run the simulation now and see what the cutoff frequency is. So you can see it's a low pass filter in that you have a very high attenuation at 0 Hz going down to like 140 dBs and then let's have a quick look at the 3 dB point so you can see the dB value over here and you can see the frequency over here so you can see at approximately 10 Hz we have a attenuation of minus 3.42 dBs so quite close to what we were looking for now let's try one of the suggestions I made during the presentation which was to have a smaller value resistor over here and increasing the capacitance value. So that would mean that the filter is affected less by the load impedance and obviously we have a perfect source anyway so it's not going to be affected by this side. So I'm going to change the value of the capacitor to 47 microfarads which is a value that you can find commonly. Going through that equation again for the cutoff frequency, I would need a resistance value of 339 ohms. So let's do the simulation on this and see how close it is to the 3 dB point. You can see now that it's a little bit closer than what it was before, but still not perfectly at 3 dB. But then again, my frequency, I've, you know, because this is a manual thing that I'm setting here, and obviously I can't find the 10 hertz point exactly and that might be due to the number of steps I have in there. But you can see this filter is doing roughly that what we wanted to do. But then you can you can play around with the capacitance value and the resistance value to get to real life numbers because having a capacitor value of 15.915 is no use to anyone. I think what you should do is calculate the exact values first so 15.915 and then find the closest real life available value there. Resistors are generally easier to find than capacitors in that you have a lot more options for the resistance values. So it would be easier to kind of adjust the resistance value after fixing your capacitor to a real world value if you were to design a rumble filter for an audio application. So thank you for watching today. Hopefully you found the solution useful. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share this video.